everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, as you can tell by the title, this is a little bit different type of uh, video. And you might be saying, what does container collapse have to do with uh, plastic models? Well, very, very much actually, because one of those containers that you're looking at collapsed, or possibly even one that's in the ocean right now, had a whole container of product for Andy's Hobby Headquarters on it. And I laugh because, I mean, what else can you do at this point right now? It's, uh, it's a crazy thing. So this particular ship right here that you're looking at uh, left port a couple weeks ago. And then on Monday afternoon, it uh, hit some really large and bad weather. And I mean large from what I, a couple different reports, but some of them said the seas were up to 20 feet. And they had a container collapse on this ship. And this is a picture of the ship itself after all the you know containers had fallen over. There's all kinds of different reports that up to maybe 2,000 containers may have fallen into the water. Uh, as you can see right here, this ship holds a lot, a lot of stuff on it. So it was about 1,600 miles from Hawaii. In fact, the, uh, the Coast Guard, the United States Coast Guard has issued warnings for... Uh, stuff for ships and uh, boats near the Hawaiian Islands to be aware that there might be some floating containers in the nearby area. Now the once this all this happened right here the ship turned around and is heading to Kobe Japan they said to uh, safely unload what is still left there. So we were notified that our container was on that ship they don't know if it was one in the front that's still stacked up on there, one of the ones in the middle that might not be completely damaged, or one of the ones that was in the ocean somewhere. So it's kind of up in the air. The reason I bring all this up too is, first of all, it's it's in a very unusual story. In fact, they said this could be the worst container accident minus a ship actually completely sinking that has happened. In fact, if 2,000 containers were lost, that is more than they lose the entire year on all the container ships traveling all over the world. So. A little bit of a weird story there but since we're talking about shipping because shipping has been an absolute nightmare um, we've got uh, we've got COVID going on around the world and everybody's doing mail order and stuff so getting product has always been tough especially these last couple of months because air freight is pretty much out uh, so few airplanes are traveling especially overseas that you know a lot of that stuff was in cargo holds was product coming to the United States or Europe or wherever you, you are at so uh, that's why things are having to go more surface, more ships, and then when something like this happened, this is really going to slow it down. In fact, uh, it's probably going to take another week to get back to Japan, and then God knows how long they're going to take to unload that. So I, on that container, I know we had Ryefield Models and Tacom and a few other companies on there. So there might be a little bit of delay on some of the product coming to our website for those particular things. But speaking of shipping, like we started to say earlier, uh, please be advised because of COVID, there is going to be big delays on shipping even inside the country. In fact, the U.S. Mail, UPS, and FedEx, who we use all three to ship with, have all said that if you want to get it by Christmas, you should place your order by December 14th. Uh, if you're because they want that extra time, even priority mail. The U.S. Postal Service is saying could take up seven to ten days right now just because it's so backlogged and so many people are, are doing mail order. So just keep that in mind. If you go on andyshq.com and you order something and you're hoping it to be a Christmas present, we're going to get it out as soon as possible. But please understand that um, after it leaves our hands, it's, it's literally out of our hands. So um, the earlier you get it, the better off you're going to be on there. Now... Having said that, we still do have a lot of containers coming in. In fact, we are unloading a huge, huge order of Edward plastic models and with some incredibly fair prices. And what I mean by that is the prices that we've been paying over here in the United States for so long have been, been okay. But now that we are dealing direct with Europe and coming in and we get them containered in, you'll see some extremely low prices on the uh, on the Edward plastic models, I know they're loading them into the system right now on our website. Uh, it might take a 
maybe by the end of the day, Monday at the absolute latest, they're going to get it all checked in. I've got a couple pictures down there of them unloading everything and getting it all checked in. So, But uh, keep an eye out for those. Plus, there's going to be lots of other stuff. I know Fruel Model Track just showed up and um, a different order. Thankfully, too, the, the DOSWorks subs were not on that container. Those are coming on a separate thing. Those are still scheduled for early January. Um, as last we know, those are being loaded up actually pretty soon. So we should uh, hear a little bit more about that, like I said, very soon. So also, and since we're just talking here, um, I'll show you this right here that I'm working on. Uh, Obviously, it's a very busy time of the year in my store because that is my main job, running the, the hobby store. And, of course, I want to get as much stuff out and share with you guys on YouTube. I am at the point where working on this brand new kit from Tamiya. This is their 48 scale T3485. It will be out, I believe, early January is what the last thing they told me on it. And I'm at the stage right now where I completely built it. I just primed it uh, to check to see if I have any flaws I need to sand or anything like that. Great kit going together really well. It's a 40A scale Tamiya kit, so it, it's a pretty quick build and fit is very, very nice on it. So look for a video complete build on that very, very soon. Also, I have talked to uh, a couple of different manufacturers, lots of cool stuff. Some of it I can't talk about yet coming out in the new year, but some really cool stuff coming out. Well, first of all, that a thing I can't talk about, many of you may know about as well, is Ming has reached out to me and they want to uh, share some of their early products with you guys. And we will be getting an early sample of their new giant scale GT40 really incredible looking kit and uh, as soon as I get that I will have a preview video and then of course a build video on that as well. I am going to work on the uh, the Tamiya uh, McLaren Senna. I couldn't think of that for a minute. The McLaren Senna. I do plan on working that. Uh, I Like I said I already had started that T34. I wanted to get that done. I don't like working on more than one project at once. It's kind of like I've been a rule since I've been doing YouTube. In the past, I would have four or five items going at once, but I find uh, I have a tendency to want to push those to the side if something new and cool comes out. So my rule has usually been finish what you've got. Now, having said that, I do have one project which I get quite a few comments on. When are you going to finish? And that is the Tamiya tow truck. And here it is. I <laughs> went, went in the back room and figured I'd better show you guys. Some of you might not even know what I'm talking about. This is Tamiya's 1 14th scale remote control, full functional operational uh, tow truck that they've come out. And for the while there, I had a problem getting Tamiya paint. And the Tamiya spray paints were getting kind of difficult. And the one color yellow that I chose was completely out at Tamiya, all my distributors. And I only had one can and I already had started spraying it. And then we did that. So I kind of pushed it to the side and then of course, life takes place and uh, got pushed back a little bit more. But just to let you know, I am going to start working on this again. It, don't expect a video next week of the final build or anything, but we've got the first coats of paint on there. I'm going to decal, you know, do, we'll do more painting on it, decal, do all that stuff, clear coat, and then we will have a video. And as you can see, it's a beast, beast of a kit here. Now, since we're talking about Tamiya paint, that is another thing that I want to tell you guys that be on a be aware of, I should say, that uh, there's going to be some shortages of Tamiya products in the United States. It's already starting to happen right now. Some of the spray paints are disappearing. TS13, Tamiya Spray Clear. From the last thing I have heard my, by my distributors, late January, early February is when we are going to get the next batch in. And I burned through every bit I've had, uh, I had cases and cases of it. And as word got out that you know it's getting harder and harder to find, it's starting to disappear. And a lot of that comes from the fact that Rust-Oleum bought out uh, testers and Model Master. And they've pretty much discontinued all of the Model Master line. In fact, I've got a rack, two racks in the back of Model Master in my store here. One of them the enamel, one of the acrylic, and they're virtually empty and we're about to get rid of them to replace them with something else. Uh, hopefully Ravel enamel paints are supposed to be coming into the country and I'm, I've got those on order. So that'll be my enamel replacement for whatever uh, Rust-Oleum does with testers. But 1260 and 1261 from testers, which is their dull coat and gloss coat. I have not been able to get, and actually none of the distributors in this country have been able to get for, it's it been a, probably two or three months right now. And we've finally exhausted 
the huge amount of inventory I have on that. And even for myself, I usually kept like a six pack aside for that so I could always use it for painting and doing my models. I'm even out of it right now. And it's kind of scary because we don't have a heck of a lot of options. If Tamiya's out and Testers doesn't make it anymore, which I'm not positive about that. I've gotten some, some conflicting information about 1260 and 1261. One company said they think it's gone completely. The other one thinks that they might still come out with it. So... If someone's from working from Tester Corp under Rust-Oleum, please keep your 1260 and 1261, the clear coat and dull coat still in production. It, it's great right out of the can, or at least come out with the little bottles even, so we can even airbrush it ourselves. Or better yet, come out with a big, big can of it right there for us modelers, because it's a little can we go through pretty quickly. But So keep in mind that with Tamiya, there are a few colors that are starting to dry up too with Tamiya, like red, believe it or not, of all colors. And I've also heard that the LP colors, the uh, the lacquer paints, have been delayed a little bit more again. So we're definitely not going to see them this year. Maybe sometime early next year. We're not positive on that. We're trying to, to get some more information on it. But the LPs are going to be delayed. And that is strictly because, uh, because of COVID. Modeling is big worldwide right now. Uh, just getting product in general, like I told you earlier, is really, really tough. But... Everybody is staying home and modeling, and because of that, manufacturers can't keep up. And then once they finally do catch up, shipping is slowed on that. So, so bear in mind with that. So we try to keep as well stocked as possible here in the store and on their online store. And even even we, even with all this stuff, we run out of from time to times. But uh, we're trying our hardest to refill as much stuff as we possibly can. So, like I said, I know this is a little bit of an unusual video, but. Uh, I had a few minutes on a Saturday morning that I wanted to talk to you, and I heard about the uh, container collapse last night, and I thought, well, that is a strange, interesting story, especially when one of our containers is one of them somewhere in the ocean, somewhere on the ship. We don't know at this point here. So, so I am going to get back to work on that T3485. I will slowly start to work on this for you. The, uh, the boy, I can't keep, I keep messing that up. McLaren Senna. I don't know why, it's sitting right over there in front of me there. I'll start working on the McLaren Senna, and then the new Ming GT40. Uh, we'll get one of those in, and I'll start doing, the, I'll first of course do the review for you guys, and then show you the whole thing. And then we also hope to get the new Ming FA18 in. There's a new 148 scale FA18E that Ming has announced. I'm very excited about that, because it'd be nice to get a really good, great state-of-the-art uh, F-18 in 40A scale to go along with all those nice Tamiya F-14s and the F-16s that they have. And then, of course, there's a few other companies that make some nice f 15 So the F-18 will be a, a great kit to get a hold of. So it is almost time for me to open up my story. So I'm going to let you guys go today. I want to thank you, as always, for watching. And please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming. One other thing, too. Because uh, of the, the contacts that I get around the world, we're going to be letting you know more and more new products that come out. Uh, in fact, we were one of the first ones to break the news on the McLaren Senna. I got it right that time. And I would definitely, if you're interested in modeling like that, go ahead, hit the subscribe button down below there. That way you'll, and the ring the, the bell, that way you'll be notified every time a new video comes out. And anytime we get any new information on modeling, we will certainly share it with you. Thanks for watching.